Oh, hey, step into my office. Starting off, we got a lot of questions around finding motivation. It feels like a lot of people get stuck in ruts often. How do you approach finding motivation? You know, for me, the answer to that is always the same, that, you know, motivation and inspiration are um, the unreliable mistress. Motivation and especially inspiration is going to come and go in the best of times. Uh, there's going to be times where you just don't feel like it. Um, there's going to be times where uh, you're going to be asking yourself, what's the point? Or uh, is this actually the most productive use of my time? Or even on the more specific level, is this the right place for me to be? All those kinds of thoughts. And all of that just comes down to a, a sort of resistance that, that's really, we all share. It's a very natural thing. I think the, the better thing to focus on is commitment. Uh, commitment to having a practice. And there's so many benefits to that uh, besides pictures. If I relied on motivation, uh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have half the pictures I have now because there's lots of times where I'm walking out the door to just live out the commitment to myself that I made in, in uh, doing this practice. There was a time when I had a full-time day job and uh, by the time anyone sees this video it'll be 10 years since uh, I got fired from that job which was maybe the best thing that ever happened to me because I thought I was going to spend the rest of that year figuring out what the next thing was going to be and I never figured it out and I'm still out here taking pictures instead. You know, I don't need motivation beyond remembering that when I had that job all I wanted was to be out here. And then you get out here and you're like, wait, I don't feel like being out here. But I just rem I keep remembering that guy. Having a practice It really helps me with so many things besides photography, about like understanding myself and understanding people. You know, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of the questions about motivation uh, relate to feeling like there's a lot of sameness to what goes on in our practice. You know, you spend a lot of time not seeing things that are interesting. You spend a lot of time not shooting, a lot of time feeling like you're waiting for something. But uh, we have no real knowledge of what, what we're experiencing. We're in a world of constant change, and we don't not aware of what's changing and what isn't until later. And the photos help us understand that. But you're not going to understand that while you're taking them. You're not going to know, like, oh, this park is going to be completely transformed in a few years. You, you know, even if you thought that, you wouldn't know which things. But you know, um, outside of the the. The issue of just resistance, which is just our humanity uh, fucking with us. There's also the question that came up a lot related to motivation about, about getting through the winter. Like, you know, it's admittedly harder to feel uh, the same enjoyment a lot of the time shooting in winter uh, when the streets are less busy and people are more covered up and not living as publicly. But hey, think about it this way. If you only shoot during the times when it's pleasant and good weather and, and busy, all your photos are going to look like that. And there's a lot of stuff in life that's really evocative and complex and interesting at other times. You know, in the snow, in the sleet, in the cold nights, there's all kinds of stuff to see. So restricting yourself just to the easy times uh, you'll only get the easy times pictures. And if you challenge yourself to stay out during the difficult times, I think you gain a certain strength from that and a certain awareness of who you are that's really, really meaningful. You know, if we're just picking when are the good times to go out, then we're just all focused on the result. And I've never found that to be a very lasting satisfaction, being focused on the result. Of course we want results, we want great pictures, but that can't be the entire name of the game, you know? So we had a lot of questions about uh, doing street photography in small towns and cities that are not so active, not so uh, full of uh, people, um, and where your presence will be absolutely noticed, and so on. And uh, this comes up a lot in my Zoom workshops because people are zooming in from all over the country and even other countries, and some of the places that they live are very quiet places in small towns. What it tells me 
this question coming up is that uh, a lot of us uh, think we know what kind of picture we're supposed to be taking based on what we've seen. So you see street photography, uh, especially from New York, who is very overrepresented in street photography. And we think that uh, the pictures we take have to look like that. But um, that's not true. And the good news is where you live is more undiscovered in terms of street photography. It just means you're going to have to make a different kind of picture. Um, and it may take a little bit different kind of process. There's no reason you can't do something really great there. Um, there have been amazing street photographers uh, in history who, um, who came from very small places. Mark Cohen, who uh, did most of his great work in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Incredible work. And it's not a very busy, active place. Good news. You, you have a chance to contribute something that hasn't been seen. You know, I don't think we've seen, like, the great street photography of, uh, you know, Kickapoo, Nevada, or, uh, you know, Richmond, Virginia, or, you know, name another small place, you know, uh, Mule Shoe, Texas. You know, there's probably great pictures to be made there. You're just not going to find the same material as you would in New York. So don't make New York pictures there if that's not the material that's coming to you. Uh, the disease is looking at what's been done and thinking you have to replicate that. And I think that comes up in a lot of arts, not just photography, but I see a lot, a lot of that in our medium of, of people thinking that the, the target, the bullseye, is um, that stuff you've seen before. You know, I think when things get really good is when you stop trying to imitate what you've seen and you start looking for something else. And there's always something else. You still may not judge it as great, or you may, but uh, there is always something else. And the last topic stems from this specific question. The question is, can experimenting lead us away from what is essential? How to find your own voice? Mm. Uh, I, I can't imagine how experimenting could lead us away from what's essential, but I guess it depends on what you think is essential. I mean, to me, what's essential is, is the, the search for the new. Uh, what I see a lot of people doing in pursuit of voice is uh, a real mistake, which is it's, it's a lot of choosing. It's a lot of deciding, like deciding I, I like this and I like this and I like this. So those are my touchstones for my style or voice. I'm not really big on deciding. I'm really big on discovering. So for me, what's really exciting is to go into the world and have a process, and through that process make discoveries that reflect back to me who I am and what my tendencies are, what my frailties are, what my strengths are, and let that stuff uh, be the, the infrastructure of, of what, whatever my voice is. I just find that a, a, a better path to authenticity Anders Peterson said a really interesting thing once about <clears throat> how to him photography wasn't about good and bad pictures, it was about making things that were believable. And I didn't understand that, I thought that was a confusing statement. Not the good and bad part, I, un I, I got with that, but the believable part I didn't really understand. But then you, you start to understand that you know maybe part of that's his English, I think he really means authenticity. He means that if I see your picture of any given situation, I want to feel like this isn't something that, um, that you did to imitate something you'd seen before. This isn't you trying to fit into uh, what we've decided street photography is. Um, I believe that any genre or art form can keep expanding and keep growing. And the only way that happens is through us, through us uh, finding what's next. And that's, not, again, not something you can decide. I can't decide to take an innovative picture today. Uh, I can want to. So uh, I say, no, experimenting can't lead you away from what's essential. If, if anything, it will get you closer to what's essential. And um, how to find a voice, it's all the things I just said. Uh, it's, it's about discovering what's already in you. Um, not about uh, going and getting what other people have. The funny thing about finding a voice too is like as it, when you get to the point where you start to recognize a voice in your in your work there's um, 
There's a great feeling that comes with that, but there's also a downside, which is if I had had the opportunity to really uh, decide and, and uh, design my voice, well, I think I would have chosen some different stuff. Chosen to be uh, a little darker, more serious, more hard hitting, you know, a lot, of, a lot of qualities that I feel like are in me, but that's not really what I see in a lot of the pictures. But then I have to remember that I don't control how anyone else sees this stuff. There are people who look at my pictures and think I'm a big joker, and other people look at my pictures and think that I'm terribly serious, and, uh, and others who think I'm romantic. And, you know, there's going to be all these different interpretations. But it is a really funny thing to look at your voice that you've evolved as organically and honestly as you can and then see these things that you're sort of like, am I really that person? Perhaps. <laughs> Thanks for answering those questions, Ruben. Ask any time here, here, here in my office. Let the people know where, if they're interested in these answers, about your workshops or anything you got, or where else they can keep digging. Yeah, I mean, go to my website, rubenratting.com. If you can spell it, you can find me. And um, at there in my Instagram, you'll find links to things I'm working on. I'm, I've got zines to sell you and, and uh, workshops that I'm leading. And um, yeah, just trying to keep it all going. Tune in next time. Maybe April for the sure. next one? We yeah, do sure. Quarter. A little springtime office hours. If you want to submit a question, follow Ruben on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. And th that's where we gather these. So uh, till next time. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Yeah, before you guys leave, make sure to check out Gelatin Labs. If you're looking for a film lab that cares about you, that cares about film, cares about photography, and the environment, they're planting a tree for every order placed. Go place an order yesterday, today. Hit them up, show them some love. All right, peace. Now when they see us in the streets, all they want to do is take pics. And I'm like, oh.